my yarny friends i'm sarah satch and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel and merry christmas in july now this is our fourth crochet pattern for our merry christmas in july 2022 and this is a poinsettia that's the way my mother used to say it hexagon granny and there are tons of things that you can make with this pattern you can make a scarf you can make a hat you can make a blanket a table runner a um table cloth pillows whatever you want oh even a gift bag you can make whatever you want with this beautiful poinsettia granny hexagon now i know we normally make them in red but i was online the other day just looking at pictures of real poinsettias and I noticed that they have some that are in like a pink, soft pink color. And they also have some that are white. I even saw some blue ones. And so they make them in lots of different colors. There's a lot of them that are speckled too, that are really pretty to look at. But I decided just to concentrate on the three colors. A red, a white, which this one is a cotton that has some green and red speckles in it. And then a pink. This hexagon measures approximately from point to point nine inches so it's a nice size to group together and make a bunch of poinsettia hexagons into some beautiful projects at the end of the video i am going to show you how i'm going to attach mine together to form my i'm going to be making um a tablecloth so if you would like the written pattern with lots of pictures, you can find that pattern in the link that's provided down in the notes underneath this video. I also wanted to point out that if you just wanted to make up some of the poinsettias, use them as appliques, maybe a magnet, or just to put on a gift bag or something, you can do that. You can make just the poinsettia put it on your Christmas sweater or Christmas hat, that would be beautiful. It measures about five inches across from point to point. I'm making mine out of cotton because I'm going to be using it as a centerpiece tablecloth. All right, so what I used is this green from Sugar and Cream. It is called Kiwi for the green portion. I use this one from Peaches and Cream, the yellow, that is called Sunshine for the center of my poinsettias. And then I used this. This is these cones that you get from Peaches and Cream. This is the one that I used for the um, off-white one. It has little specks of red, green, and purple in it. I don't know the name of it. I just got it on this cone had it for a long time and then the red one of course is cherry and that's the peaches and cream as well and I had these big cones and so I thought in this great big green one so I thought it'd be great for making a tablecloth now the amount that you need totally is up to what you're making so I don't have um, the amount if you're making a bedspread or something like that it doesn't take very much to make one but of course depending on what you make you're going to need more the other thing I wanted to mention is you can use any acrylic or any fiber yarn that you want to as long as it's a medium weight number four yarn. It doesn't have to be cotton. I'm using cotton because I'm making one for my tablecloth. But you can do this in acrylic yarns as well. All right. We're going to be stitching today with our eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And we're using a little bit bigger of a hook than we usually use for a medium weight number four yarn but we're going to be stitching in triple stitches and i wanted more of an open lacy look since it is going to be more of a decoration than a blanket for mine now if you want it to be a little bit tighter you want your stitches closer you can always go down a hook size and if you want it even more lacy go up to that j hook you can just play with it and do what you think works best for the project you're going to make with these hexagons. 
All right, the other thing you need, of course, is a needle for weaving in all those ends and then a pair of scissors. I do recommend that if you're going to make a larger project, go ahead and pick up some of these cones because there's a lot of yarn on those. And the same thing with your acrylic yarns, get extra of what you think you're going to need because you know how dye lots go. Even though sometimes the dye lot is the same, the batch that comes from the beginning of the dye lot may be different than what comes at the end of the dye lot, okay? So I love these great big ones here like this from Sugar and Cream. They work fantastic for big projects as well. But since I was just doing the centers of my poinsettias with yellow, I picked up several of these. All right, so it's kind of what you've got in your yarn stash or what you want, the colors that you want to make. For today's demonstration, we're going to be making our poinsettia hexagon in these colors. The red can be a little bit difficult to see, so I, and since I want to make another one in this color anyway, I thought I'd do that for our demonstration. We're going to be starting with the yellow, then we'll do our poinsettia, and then we'll finish off with the hexagon in green. All right, so I've got my yarn here. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll put the tail of yarn over our hook and pull that through. Then we'll snug that down and tie that stay knot. And that's gonna keep our five chain loop from coming undone. If you prefer to use a magic circle here, you certainly can. We're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And now we're going to stitch 11 double crochets, so we have a total of 12. So go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. So that's two, and we need to stitch 10 more. go. You'll also notice as I'm stitching these double crochets, I'm stitching over my tail of yarn. That way at the end of this row, I can close up that hole for a nice and neat center to my poinsettia. Alrighty, let's see how many I've stitched so far. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's pull that little loop out of that yarn there. All right, let's stitch two more. That'd be eleven and twelve. So I have twelve. <laughs> twelve double crochets. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch. And we're not going to chain three because we're going to be changing colors. So we don't want to do any stitches until after we've changed colors. So I'm going to pull that loop a little bit big so it doesn't come out. We're going to turn this over and gently pull on that string. And that's going to close up the center of that circle needle over here. When you're dealing with cotton yarn, sometimes if you fan out the end of it, it makes it easier to put it on your needle. You can just flatten it out, fold it over, and push it through the eye of the needle. And that works sometimes even with some of the other yarns as well. Alrighty, so I'm just going to weave this in around those stitches because I'm making a tablecloth and so I want my tablecloth to be able to go through the laundry and still hold up. All right, so we're just gonna weave that in. I'm gonna do a few more stitches that came out. There we go. Make sure it's nice and secure. Going through fibers and stitches. All right. So row one is complete. We have 12 
double crochets. We're finished with our yellow yarn, so we're going to go ahead and cut that. For this poinsettia, anyway. <laughs> I have a lot more to make. All right, so now we're going to bring in the color that we're going to use for the flower petals themselves. All right. And then we're going to chain one and the chain one will not count as a stitch it just gets us up where we need to be and keeps things nice and neat so now what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in the first double crochet and then we're going to chain three one two three we're going to skip this next double crochet and single crochet in the next one and chain three one two Three. Then we'll do that again. And we'll repeat it till we have six loops. Single crochet, chain three, skip the next, and single crochet in the next, chain three skip the next single crochet in the next chain three and then we'll join to that first single crochet where we started all right and so what we have done is we have one two three four five six chain three loops and we're going to stitch our petals in the next row in those loops so now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a petal in each one of these chain three spaces so first thing we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into this next chain three space and chain three now we're going to stitch two triples in this space so we're going to wrap our hook twice Go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two, yarn over and go through the third two. Now we're going to stitch another triple. There we go. We're going to stitch a pico stitch. So we're going to chain two. We're going to slip stitch in the top of that stitch and that forms a little bump. Now we're going to stitch two more triples in this same chain three space. And chain three, one, two, three. We're going to slip stitch in this same chain three space and then we'll slip stitch into the next space. And that is our first petal. Chain three, two triples, pico, two triples, chain three. All right, so now we slip stitch in our next petal and we'll do the same thing. Chain three, two triples, chain two, slip stitch into the top of that stitch, and then two triples in the same chain two space, sorry, chain three space, and chain three. Slip stitch in the same chain three space, and then slip stitch into the next chain three space. So now I have two petals. All right, let's do another one together. Get some more yarn out here. All righty. Chain three, two triple stitches. They're also called treble stitches. chain two, slip stitch in the top of that stitch, two triples, and 
and chain three, slip stitch in the same chain three space, and then slip stitch in the next chain three space. So now I have three, and I'll repeat this three more times for a total of six petals. I have stitched my six petals, chain three, two triples, pico, two triples, and a chain three, slip stitch in the same chain three, and on this last one we're going to join to the single crochet of R2. As if we were to join to the chain four, it would be way up here and would mess up the look of our petals. All right, I'm gonna pull that just a little bit so that you can see how that looks. So I have six petals for my poinsettia. Well, we want a second set of petals and I'm gonna show you how to do that on the next two rows. Now, what we're going to be doing is adding some loops on the back of our work. All right, get those strings out of the way there. So to begin with, we're going to chain two. And on the back of our work, we're gonna go to those two center triple crochet stitches, and we're gonna go through the back loops and stitch a slip stitch. And that means we'll just pull that loop through those two loops and then pull it through that loop. And now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. We're gonna to go to the next loop. We're gonna find those two center triple crochet stitches and go through those two loops in the center in the back and then slip stitch. And chain four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to be making chain four loops and we're going to stitch our petals in those loops and that's going to make them offset from the front. All right, so we'll do that again. We'll go to the back Find those two center triple crochets, go through those two loops in the center bottom there, slip stitch and chain four. One, two, three, four. All right, and I'll do this on these next three petals as well. We started with this chain two, and now we, but we have six of our chain four loops. Here's my last chain four loop. When we go to join, we're going to ignore this chain two. We're going to join to that first slip stitch with a slip stitch. The chain two there was just to get us to the center of our first petal. All right, and now we're gonna go in that first chain four space and stitch a slip stitch. All right, and then we'll go ahead and chain three. And this is going to give us six loops that we're going to stitch petals in again. I wanna move these that need to be weaved in out of the way so you can see a little better. And we're going to stitch a petal just like we did here in each of these chain four spaces. It's gonna give it a little bit of a 3D look and it also offsets the petals in between the petals that we stitched on our first row of petals. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch the petals in the chain four spaces exactly like we did on our first row of petals. We have our chain three, we're going to stitch two triples. chain two, slip stitch in the top of that stitch for our pico, and then two more triple stitches. And 
and then chain three, slip stitch in the chain four space, and then we'll go to the next chain four space and stitch another petal. And so we're stitching it exactly the same. The only difference is we're stitching in chain four spaces instead of chain three. There's our chain two for our pico. We'll join to the top of that triple. Two more triples. chain three, slip stitch in the chain four, and then we go to the next chain four space and repeat what we just did. All right, so this is how it looks on the back and see how it kind of, it's kind of up higher, makes it have a little bit of a 3D effect. And then when we turn it over, it's going to lay in between the petals a little bit higher so that we have two rows of petals. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and repeat on these last four, chain four spaces, the petals, just like we did here. And that will give us six petals. All right, so now I have three petals and I need to stitch three more for my poinsettia. I have completed that second row of petals and you can see how they sit in between the other petals to give it a nice full 3D appearance. This is how it looks on the front. This is how it looks on the back. These are those loops where we stitch those petals and it gives it a little bit of a 3D look. If you want to use this as an applique or a pen or um, for, you know, just a decoration without the hexagon, it's pretty much finished off the same. All right, so we've stitched our last chain three and slip stitch. We're gonna go to that first slip stitch where we started and join with the slip stitch, just like that. I've gone ahead and cut my yarn and we're going to add more loops on the back in order to add the green section to make it have the green background. But if you want this as a pen or an applique or a decoration without the back, you can tie that off, weave in those ends and use it as is. It makes a lovely, lovely poinsettia. All right, but now we're going to add the next row. So we're going to bring in our green yarn. Snug that down. There we go. And basically we're going to repeat what we did when we added those loops for petals. Okay, so we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. We did the petals, we chained two. On this we're chaining three. And we're gonna to go to those center two stitches in the back, stitch a slip stitch, and this time we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll go to that next back of the petal. We'll find those two center stitches of those two center petal or uh, triple stitches of the petal and stitch a slip stitch and repeat one two three four 
five. We'll go to the next petal, find those stitches in the center, and go through those two loops and stitch a slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and then we'll work this around just like we did on the other loop row. The only difference is we're chaining five and then we began with a chain three instead of a chain two. So I've made three loops, because remember we're not counting that chain three at the beginning there. So I need to do three more times and then join. So I have my loops. I need to do a chain five, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to ignore this chain three and we're going to join to that slip stitch with a slip stitch and then we'll go in that chain five space and chain four. All right, so we have six loops. We ignored that chain three and joined to the slip stitch and chained four. One, two, three, four, five, six loops. So this is how it should look. You've got six loops we joined to that slip stitch and chained four. This chain four counts as a triple. All right, we're gonna stitch two more triples in this chain five loop. We're going to chain two and then stitch three more triples in this chain five loop. and chain two. And so what we did in that first chain five loop is we chained four, which counted as a triple. We stitched two triples, chain two, and three triples, and then chain two. So now we're gonna go to the next chain five loop and stitch three triples. One, two, three, chain two, and three triples. And I chose to do triples on this project because again, I wanted it to be open and lacy. All right, chain two. And so what you're going to do on these last four chain five loops is stitch three triples, chain two, and three triples, and then chain two. and three and chain two. So now I have three and I'm going to need to stitch three more. One, two, three, three triples, chain two and three triples, chain two in these next three chain five loops. So I completed those remaining three. So you're going to have six points on your hexagon. Here's my last chain two. We're going to join to the top of that chain four. You're gonna slip stitch in those next two triple stitches and then slip stitch in the chain two space and chain four. 
All right, now, for this row, we're going to do all six of those corners exactly the same. We're gonna have three triples, chain two, and three triples. Then we'll chain two, and in this chain two space between, we'll stitch three triples, chain two. So our chain four counts as our first triple. So we're going to stitch two more triples so that we have three. Chain two and three more triples for our corner. One, two, and three triples. We'll chain two, and that brings us to this chain two space, and we'll stitch three triples. And chain two. So I've got my corner, which is three triples, chain two, and three triple stitches, chain two, and then three triples in that chain two space, and chain two. And that brings me to my next corner. So we'll stitch three triple stitches. One. two, there we go, three, chain two, and three triple stitches. One, two, and three. Then again, we'll chain two, and go to this next chain two space and stitch three triples in the chain two space. One. Whoops, let's do that one over. Two wraps. <laughs> one, two, and three. And chain two. All right, and so now we have two corners and two sides, and you'll repeat this on these last four sides and then join back to our chain four. So I completed this row. I have six corners, six sides. Here's my chain two. We're going to join to the chain four with a slip stitch. Then we're gonna slip stitch in the next two triple stitches, and then slip stitch in the chain two space and chain one. All right, now I only did two rows of the green and then I'm going to finish with a single crochet row. If you would like this to be bigger, you can continue to make it bigger the same way you do a granny square, only you're gonna have six points instead of the four. And every row you'll increase on the sides with your chain two spaces. All right, I wanted mine this size because I wanted to make a bunch of poinsettias. You may wanna make less of the flowers and have more green or even add white or other colors to it. Maybe a variegated Christmas would be pretty. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting carried away with the colors. We join to our chain two space and we're going to do a solid row of single crochet to finish off our hexagon. So in this corner, we're going to stitch a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet. Then we'll go to these three triples and stitch a single crochet in each of the top of those three triple stitches. This brings us to our chain two space, and we're just going to stitch one single crochet in that chain two space. Then we'll go to the next and stitch one single crochet in those three triple stitches. 
Then we'll stitch one single crochet in the chain two space. Then one single crochet in the three triple stitches. And that brings us to our next corner. And in this corner, we're going to stitch a single crochet, chain one, and single crochet. And that tightens it up a little bit and makes it look nice and neat. All right, let's do another one. We've got our single crochet, chain one, single crochet. We're going to stitch a single crochet in these three triples. We're going to stitch one single crochet in the chain two space, one single crochet in the three triples, one single crochet in the chain two space, and then one single crochet in those three triples. And see how that just makes it look nice and neat I really like that. I think it just make, gives it like a nice edge. And it also gives you a row of single crochets to join them together. Now I'm gonna to continue to repeat what I did here on my other sides, and then I'll join back to my first single crochet. I completed my solid row of single crochet around. It lays really pretty once you get that row of single crochet on there. All right, I'm gonna to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and we'll cut our yarn. I'm gonna grab that loop, pull it to the back so we get a much nicer appearance. There we go. All righty, now I just need to take my needle. I have some weaving in to do behind the flowers and then this one here, and we'll get it all weaved in and looking nice. And remember, it does take a little bit extra effort to weave in all those in securely, but if you're gonna be using this where it's gonna get washed often, you don't want those ends to come out. And again, the key to getting those ends in nice and securely is to go in the stitches going through fibers go one way, go up a little and turn around and come right back through your stitches like this. So here's our speckly white poinsettia we did today. Here's the pink one I did the other day and a red one I did the other day. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm going to put mine together, all right? So I'm gonna set the pink one aside. We're gonna take these two, put the flowers to the inside, we're going to be working on the back of our work. We're going to be working on the outside loops. And I'm going to tell you, on this side it's going to be the front loops, and this side it's going to be the back loops, okay? So we're gonna start in the corner, we're gonna go in the loop on this side and the loop on this side, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and chain one there. All right, then we're going to just slip stitch on the outside stitches. And I like to do this just a little bit loose. I think it helps it lay nicer. All right, and so I'm going to slip stitch, working on the outside loops, the front on this side and the back on that side. I'm gonna do a few stitches here. I'm just slip stitching. I'm not doing anything special. And there are literally thousands of ways to join squares or hexagons. And you can Google that or you can get on YouTube and search it. There are just so many ways I can't even count. But when I'm going to do something like this, I like to use the slip stitch method. All right, so let me, I'm gonna do another stitch. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the front. All right, so we're gonna open this up. And when you look on the front, you'll see that those loops we didn't stitch in are nice and close together and it looks really nice. And that's the way I'm going to be joining all of my hexagons together. And so once I've completed this, 
I need to add one this way. And so what I'll do is I'll add it this way back here. And then this will have to be folded over so that I can do it this way so that this hexagon fits in that space. And I'm going to be doing it in a circle off of my red one, alternating all the colors in sort of a random pattern. And when I get it finished, I'll show it to you, okay? All right, so that's our Christmas in July fourth crochet pattern, our poinsettia granny hexagon. <laughs>